There you go. All right, perfect. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first meeting of the semester. I'm typically not your co-chair. Um, I'm just running the meeting today just so y'all can establish co-chairs and then it'll pass over to y'all either next week or right now if y'all want to. It depends on when the, the vote is. But um, good morning, everyone. We will take attendance verbally starting from my left. Uh, Paul Nelson. President. Matthew Rathbun. John Nelson. Danny Palacios. Alejandro Casillas. William Coates. Michael Warner. All right, and for our online folks, if you could just unmute, say your name, say for present. Uh, Kristen Nairgaard, present. Uh, did we get Gabe back on the call? Gabe is oh, off. he went to an avoid. He went to an appointment here. So right, perfect. All right. Um, something I talked to Kenny about, and we're adding it to the agenda, as if we made the decision. We're just going to add the mission into the agenda, so we will start off every meeting by reading the current mission of uh, student government CSAC, so we reminded why we're here. So can I get a volunteer to read off our mission for today? John, go ahead. What do I read today? It's oh. on the agenda for you. It's the second B. Um, well, we're see. supposed to all get one. Oh, okay. Under oh. housekeeping? I could do it. Do you have the agenda? Oh, I see. Oh, housekeeping B under reading. Yeah. Oh, to support. support. That yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sure. All right. To support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Awesome. Thank you so much. Moving forward with approval of agenda. Point of personal privilege. Can you send this invite to Sarah Martin? I bet you she's trying to log in. Okay, I'll try to call her in. Um, approval of agenda. Sure. I motion to approve the agenda. Second. Uh, just no page. Cool. Do we have to? No, motion to approve the agenda has been seconded. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, after seven seconds, thank you. Moving forward to our first round of updates for SACAB, Gabe and Kristen. Gabe is not present. Kristen, do you have any updates for SACAB? Uh, yes, we have one update, and that is that we're currently um, in the process of planning when we're going to meet this semester. But aside from that, everyone's done their training, and we're good to go. Awesome, perfect. Thank you so much. Moving on to Board of Trustees, Mike. So, um, Board of Trustees updates. Um, first official meeting is in September, but um, there's lots of meetings leading up to it. Um, currently, I'm in the process of meeting with all the trustees, all the deans, all the vice presidents of the university. Um, I've, already, I've already met with President Davidson, so um, I'll report back and uh, see what goes there. But nothing else to report. Awesome. Great work, you two. Uh, moving on to open floor announcement and updates. Please keep them brief and business oriented. And open floor announcements, I see Mike. Cool. So, um, really quickly, updates. Um, candidate for director of health center, Dr. Charles Anderson. He was the only candidate. I went to that um, interview briefing. He's most likely going to get the job. I gave a thumbs up. I think he did really well there. Um, and then, secondly, the police chief town hall that was held a few days ago. Um, there was two candidates, one dropped out. Um, Commander Molner, mm -hmm. Will was here, Will and I were here too. Um, Commander Molner is most likely going to get it. Um, I think he did really well in the questions. Um, only thing I didn't really like about Town Hall is we didn't, we as the audience didn't get to ask questions. He had a prepared list of questions yeah, he was answering. So, um, otherwise, I think he's, he knows campus, he's alumni, I think they'll do a good job. So. Awesome. Um, typically for our new counselors here, open floor updates and announcements, this is where Anything you've done in your advocacy work, anything you talk to students that's really not into a committee per se, and you want to just bring up to the council for adjustment or anything, you just bring it up here. So I see Matt, Will. Um, so I want to bring this to the uh, council eventually, um, but I met with um, the IT department yesterday. I'm working with another student in creating a resource app. Uh, for campus and we got access to the app development software. Um, so my counterpart is now playing with it and trying to work towards a proof of concept. Um, and again, I want to give updates, maybe involve it in a committee at a later point. Awesome. Uh, I just wanted to just touch up on that too. Um, I'd definitely be down to help you out with that too, because I'm trying to 
I improve my skills when it comes to like coding and stuff like that. So right. if you need any help with that, I'll definitely. All right, I'll check out. I'll check it out with my partner Sam. Um, they're the technical okay. guru. I'm a social work mm -hmm. master social work student, so I'm more um, facilitating the people and organizations to be able to add stuff to the app. Okay. Awesome. Will. Wasn't it Paul? Oh no, I'm last. Okay. Um, I spoke to the director of campus uh, recreation, and uh, she wants to meet up with us more to see what we can do. We can do to make the situation better for student participation. That's awesome. Thank you. Paul. Oh. Um, I just wanted to in part explain uh, my absence from the retreat earlier today. Um, I was uh, in a meeting uh, with the Denver Aurora Community Action Committee. Some of you may be familiar with them and their work in, uh, in, in justice around police crimes. Um, we're working to become, uh, we're well along the way of becoming an official NARPA chapter. That's the National Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression. And so it was too important to miss. I'm sorry I had to uh, uh, move some things around today, but I appreciate the understanding and I'm glad I was able to be here for this. And so, um, yeah, uh, it's been a lot of my work this summer in Denver here. We've, there's a lot of names in the news, you know, in terms of, you know, this whole subject, uh, especially recently. And so if anyone's interested in that kind of advocacy, feel free to talk to me. I'd be happy to work with you on it. All right. Any other announcements, updates from the floor? No. All right. We will move into there's no old business. We'll move into new business. Uh, keeping in mind in time public comment, which is a section uh, in our agenda where anyone from the public is able to come in and talk to us from student government. Um, it's from three to three fifteen. So we'll just honor that same time as normal. Can advise about this? Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I skipped myself. Uh, advisor updates. Thank you all for everyone who did attend the retreat. Um, I'm sorry for, you know, our, our short timing. It is, we try to pack in a lot as much as we could, but everyone's schedules were kind of tight as we move into the start of the semester. Um, for those who did miss the retreat, um, there's a lot really to go over, so please be sure to meet with me if you missed the retreat so I can get you a brief synopsis of all the information. Um, key card updates and access to the office. I had, we sent over the matrix earlier in the summer. Um, the matrix was just sent back to D, who was the office manager for CMEI, saying they needed it again, so I guess they lost it. So I guess for any of you who had received or revoked access in the last couple of weeks, we're still working on it. Give us about a week or so. With everything with Welcome Week, we're kind of swamped with CMEI um, to kind of update it. When I tell you it's updating, or when I tell you it's updated, it is your job to call the Access Center at that moment before you log into the door so they can, because they sometimes will ask to approve per person access to the rooms. So y'all have full access of uh, TSAC in each of the individual rooms. Um, i trying to think. Welcome week is all week next week, Monday through Thursday, 11 to 1. Uh, our student organizations day is on day three, Wednesday, August 23rd, I believe, from 11 to 1 as well. Um, you all have the opportunity to table. Did we get anyone to sign up? That she has not been sent out yet, but that she she decided to, to table. It was, was it? it was in the board and everything. Right? around the world. Oh, yes. If, if you did it, I can, someone just get me on the back end so I can put you down as a point of contact. I can um, just, I have, so I have classes Monday through Thursday, 9.30 to 12.20, 12.30-ish. So I can do a half hour for one day, <laughs> um, but that's it, unless it's a Friday. It's on Wednesday. It's on Wednesday. Sorry, Wednesday, Wednesday from 11 to 2. Right. Okay, Wednesday, Wednesday, then I can do a half hour. I can be a point person. All right. It, we, oh, we, we, we okay. like to try to keep it order so people aren't talking over each other. Will then that. Well, Paul kind of answered my question one time. And oh, yes. The solution could be just a revolving kind of person. Yep. That's, that's for you all to figure out within yourselves. I will get you. I just need one point of contact as to who will be there the whole time. I'll be the majority of the time. Uh, I have a okay. I'll put you down. And I'll have y'all a secondary. I don't want to throw in myself a secondary. I just wanted to say something about it. Oh, go ahead. Um, I, I can't table because I'm I'm running two orgs, uh, two org tablings that day. 
Um, but I wanted to say, if we do table, we should definitely not have two people behind a table. I've done that. It's hard for you to talking to one another. And so if we do end up with only one person, we should break it up so that there's one person behind the table, maybe person talking to people or something like that. Uh, point of clarification. So the student or is it student or day is specifically Wednesday or are we also tabling during welcome week the entire? Just, just Wednesday. Oh, then I can't do that. I got a table for it. Stackness. Okay. So I will put um, Matt down as point of contact and then y'all can figure it out amongst yourselves. Just make sure you're there. Um, and I'm trying to think of anything else. I will be sending you an email with all of the PowerPoint presentations that we have gotten from the retreat um, and a couple of the things I had talked about today with the initiatives tracker and some examples for y'all to look at, some housekeeping, things like that. Something I want to establish, it doesn't have to necessarily be a committee unless someone will support back. I want one or two people, maybe an old and new counselor for student government improvement task force, we can say. Um, I'm working on website updates and kind of just logistical things to, you know, ground our foundation better. Um, if anyone is willing to serve on that, please um, just let yourself known. Mike, I, I see you. So anyone else, Denny, cool. I'll reach out to y'all just to, so we can talk and schedule some meetings on what's going on back and wise advisor wise things that I'm looking at and I just want to pass it by y'all and of course I'll pass it to the larger council just so everything is proved and moved on. Um, Dr. Brown is on a phone call so if she has anything we'll just circle back to her later but any questions for me as advisor? No I think I covered everything. Um, cool so moving on to there's no old business <laughs> moving on to new business keep in mind we have about 18 minutes before public comment. So the first order of business is resolution to declare and facilitate fall 23 SGTs at co-chair elections. Kenny, can you pull up that? Do we have any volunteers to read that? It's my resolution. Go ahead, Mike. So this is my, the next two resolutions are my attempt to kind of establish some order and establish kind of the year going forward. Um, so this is something I wrote together. Um, I hate reading this, but we can read it. So, um, <clears throat> abstract, the student governments, uh, the Student Advocacy Council, Advocacy Council began our fall session as Student FC Council of Metropolitan State University with no co-chairs. We must elect our chair slash co-chairs of this council for the upcoming fall semester. We affirm the importance of democratic principles in our work and, there should be a period there, um, work and want to ensure a framework wherein the candidates receiving the majority of the votes become those who will assume the role of chair, co-chairs. With the passing of this document, the uh, council will put in place a framework for elections to take place on the 25th of August, that is next Friday, with nominations and the election of a, an elections commissioner taking place after the passing of this resolution. So after this, we would elect an elections commissioner and stuff like that. Um, this has been in the chat for a minute, but I think, um, can we move on to the therefores? Because that's just giving kind of context. So therefore, be it hereby further resolved, effective August 18th, we will hold nominations and vote for elections chair to facilitate the election. This is a temporary appointment that will dissolve after elections are held on the following SGT second meeting. So um, if we change our meeting times, that's what it's meant to signify. People who are running for chair slash co-chairs or vice chair positions will not be able to serve as the elections chair. It is recommended that the student trustee or one of the state representatives serve this role because they are elected with specific assignments. Therefore, be it further resolved, election chair will also serve as acting chair of SGT SAC until elections for co-chair slash chair and vice chair are completed. Candidates who are seeking to run for fall 2023 co-chairs will announce their nominations during the week of August 18th. So after the passing of this, you're allowed to nominate yourselves or um, be nominated. Therefore, be it further resolved, on the next following meeting, the election chair will announce the candidates who are running for co-chair slash chair and vice chair and select a first candidate to speak. So it's a kind of first come first serve. But, um, the other candidates will be led out to the hallway during this time. The election chair will then allocate two minutes for the first candidate to read a prepared statement that they will err on why they should become chair of TSAC. The candidate uh, doesn't have to use all the time allotted. Uh, therefore, be it further resolved, after the candidate is finished with their statement, the chair will then allocate 10 minutes where members of the council will have time to ask questions of the candidates. This period will be facilitated by the elections chair. Each uh, council has a maximum of two minutes. Uh, the council does not need to use all this time. Therefore, be it for the result, after the question period has ended, the floor will be yielded back to the election chair and the candidate will be led out to the hall. Therefore, uh, therefore be it for the result, the 
chair will then call on the next candidate and then repeat the process, uh, repeat the process listed but for all candidates. Uh, therefore, be it for the resolve, once all the candidates have been presented, uh, has presented their case for becoming co-chair slash chair vice chair and a question by the council voting will begin. The election chair will instruct the executive assistant to open the Microsoft poll and put the link in the chat for the council to vote on the candidates who presented. The votes will be uh, anonymous. Then for the result, if the co-chair system is adopted by the council, then two candidates with the most votes will be elected to co-chair in the event of a tie. The candidate with the most votes is elected and a runoff will be held for the second co-chair. So, little context. We get to choose if we want a chair or two co-chairs. A chair and a vice chair or two co-chairs. That's what we get to choose here today. Oh. Um, our constitution allows it. So um, that's going to be, we're going to vote for elections commissioner and what we want this year. So that's just what's going to go on. So uh, if the chair slash vice chair is adopted by the council, then two elections will be held, one for chair and one for vice chair using the system outlined above. Uh, once all present counts, present councils have voted in elections, uh, elections slash elections, uh, the elections chair and the executive system will review and tally the votes. The chair will then announce the new co-chair slash chair and vice chair for the upcoming semester in which the term will start immediately. And with the announcement of the new co-chairs, the election chair will be given back to the presiding co-chair, dissolving the election chair role in the process, and business will continue then as normal. Blah. That's it. So, right. Well, what are questions here? So, so we'll so. open the floor for yes. questions. I read that kind of fast. So. Uh, we'll just go down the row this way. Uh, John, Naomi, Matt, Paul, anyone on the side have any questions now? Start. Two questions. The chair, there's a new chair, co chair every semester? Um, I, yes. So the way it's done in the past is every semester is a new co chair or chair. So what exactly does the chair and co chair do? They, what they're the amount they What I'm doing right now is just facilitating running down the agenda. That's really it. That's oh, that's it? Do. Yeah, yes. you regulate like who gets called on. Um, who, like, who, like, not who gets called on, but like who's next in line whenever like we raise our hands. Making sure um, order is kept. Order is kept. Mind yeah. if I add something to that? I have to go. Um, and when we complete business as a group, it's ideal that the chair sends it up to the uh, university administration. In the past, I think we had like naively assumed that like other people were doing that, but it's up to us to do it. So um, send an email every once in a while with our resolution. Oh, that's the yeah. Whatever business we've done. Um, go ahead. Uh, point of clarification. So today we're voting on chairs and if we're going to have a chair and vice chair or are we going to have two co-chairs? So just that one thing. And then next um, next meeting, we're going to vote on our elections chair? No. So you vote on the system you want for this year to run and then you vote on the election chair afterwards. So Okay. So the system to run would be? So co-chairs or chair and vice chair. Right. Okay. Thank you. Good. Cool. Matt? My question was answered. Cool. Paul? Um, I just want to make a comment. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, I see the, um, I always saw co-chairs as chair and vice chair, honestly, as someone who ends up doing most of the facilitating and then somebody can fill in should there need to be. So I don't see much. Um, that was I, your I experience see, last year, wasn't it? I, what? <laughs> that was your experience last it year. It was, especially uh, most of, you know, a lot of time. Sometimes it changed. You know, mm -hmm. it was it was hard to navigate, right, when you're doing something for the first time. I remember you saying that. So last comment. Not going to be nominating myself, but I do want to throw my head in the ring for the elections chair. I feel like I could do a good job based on what's been described here. Also, I, I, really have you I have a question, and forgive me if you stated that, but are our chair and co chair supposed to be in positions of um, impartiality except no. when voting? There's a thing in our constitution that says that. So, I mean, ideally, if you're facilitating the meeting, mm -hmm. then like I think choose choose your kind of words carefully when putting things, inserting yourself into a conversation. But there's nothing in our constitution that says you have to be impartial. That was just a decision I was made last year. And I think as another thing I'd like to suggest is our chairs, if reporting up to senior leadership, should do so in an impartial way. Right. Is that, that um, should, from the amendment to the amendment, or that probably be the next amendment for the next resolution? Well, what is, what is your question? Yeah. Well, that's, because, add, that's adding a duty to the chair. Uh, well, this isn't. This is. This isn't. Uh, um, I believe the chair is written into our constitution yeah. as doing that duty. As they have duties written in there, um, okay. I believe they've been kind of a. Uh, 
feel like it's swiped away a little bit, but um, I just need to refresh on that. But this would, it, anything changing here. So not for today, but maybe for future, we could talk about Correct. the duties. Because I, I feel like that's an important. Yeah. Um, um, hold on. Naomi, Paul, Will, Mike. Um, <laughs> this part <laughs> <laughs> so i think that like just like a comment i wouldn't call this an amendment maybe this is like a discussion maybe between the two chairs that get elected um to distribute that power so like we did choose a co-chair because i like the idea of co-chair like the whole hierarchy hierarchy of power thing like i get it it's necessary in some cases but in ours like we're a student government and i feel like we collaborate very well together so far so i feel like we should just be able to like keep that very like level-headed opinions of one another mm -hmm. so maybe just like learn how to distribute that power even like somebody gets us through this but then somebody calls on everyone else while this person's just main focus is that and then at the end of the meeting the other person can take on the responsibility of sending up the resolutions so on and so forth or if they want to like however they want to decide to do it i'm definitely not nominating myself mm -hmm. but that's just an idea that i have um i had something to add to but she clarified it for sure yep. all right mike Oh, Paul, oh, right. Because it, it relates to what Reed said. That's cool. Reed, you talked about impartiality in the chair, and I, I, you know, I agree with the impartiality in the reporting. Like, yeah. it's not like, hey, we decided on something, and now let's put your own little spin on it. Right. That's what I'm now. thinking of. Yeah. The spin. That we should just recognize as a norm, the yeah. group. Right. The work we decide on as a group needs to be presented as it as it is formed. Right. right. You don't right. change the wording on a resolution mm -hmm. after it's passed and give it up. I agree with that. What I don't agree with necessarily is a chair being able to run a meeting in the state of impartiality bias free. I just don't think it's one, I don't think it's possible. And two, I think it might contradict with certain parts of our constitution that talk about like everybody being able to like take part in discussion and talk about things, have perspective and the whole, you know, if we're going to talk about a flat structure, they got to be able to participate too. Um, and That's true. we can still expect a person with opinions to run a meeting with people they disagree with. Right. I would hope. For right. We need to get to a place where that's possible. Um, and we, we, we have them, I think. So I just wanted to go back a little bit. I don't I don't think we need to change the language about impartiality, personally. I agree with the norm. Good. Okay. All right, Mike, Will. Um, so there's just a comment. There's a section here where I said um, this election share should be trustee and say cat one of those two, only because I have my own responsibilities. I won't be running for in this next resolution if this passes. We'll be electing our committee chairs. So, the so ideally, because it's a shared governance, uh, and uh, trustee and SACAP are elected with more responsibilities off the bat. Regular counselors should be taking these committee chairs and um, and or co-chair essentially. So that's a little bit to your nomination wise. I'd rather you save your nomination for not saying you you can you can keep it in there, but I'd rather save it for um, the committee chairs. I think you that's where you should be. But. I'm just very interested in doing that. So um, are we allowed to nominate other people? Yes. So, um, or should we save that for? What do you mean? For like throw the hat in for someone else? Or certain. Yes. So once we once we have committee chairs, you can. Hey, I nominate this person for this. Okay. So would this would this be the right time for that? So for elections chair, yes, but we have to vote on the structure first, and then we'll vote on the uh, the the elections of who we want to do this. So. All right, we meet quorum, correct? Yes. Yeah, we do. All right, perfect. So there's no more in the stack. Any last questions, comments, debates, additions to the amendment? I motion vote on this resolution. I second that motion. All right, that motion is you got that, can you right? Okay. Um, the motion has been seconded, so we are voting on option one or option two. Two co chairs or a chair, vice chair, correct? Yes. Correct yes. yes. me if I'm wrong. All right, so. I thought we were voting on this resolution, which would set into. Oh, uh, he's, he's correct. He's correct. So I thought we were voting on the resolution. Once the resolution is passed, then yes. we have that election, and we also nominate an elected co chair. This is why y'all do that job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. Um, what Paul just said. <laughs> Um, so starting to my left, I will go, uh, Paul. Aye. Are you voting in favor or a position? So in favor of this you, resolution. Yes, yeah, so if you're in favor, you can say, uh, everyone in favor, we'll just go around. You can just say, yeah, nice. Wait, Paul. do we want to go opposite? Like, Paul, I like that suggestion you had last semester where we're like, is there anybody in? Oh, that's if we're in discussion. Oh, it's in discussion. Oh, in discussion. Okay. That's in like oppositional discussion. Yeah, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So. So uh, voting yay, or, or so voting in favor or not in favor for this resolution, Paul? Yay. 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 Yes. Aye. All right. And then Kristen? 
Yes. All right, so that is a unanimous PA for today's quorum. So that resolution passes. Okay. I'm still good here. All right. Um, so now opening up to the election of the system of co-chairs or chair vice chair. Are you still good? Yes. All right. So you will say co-chair or chair and vice chair. So option one is co-chair. Option two is chair vice chair. The majority wins. Majority wins. Yes. Um, starting on my left, Paul. Uh, um, I have no opinion, so I will upset. So abstain. Yeah. All right. Matt. Co chair. Co chair. Co chair. Co chair. Co chair. Co chair. Saying co chair. Co chair. Chair, co uh, chair, vice chair for one. Good. I say co chair with Delin. I'm not feeling that allowed to add comments. Just one or two. One of the two. <laughs> you can abstain too. Since the resolution passed. Yes. Yeah. I'll abstain. Okay. Uh, Kristen. Co chair. Co-chair, awesome, and that is everyone. So, majority votes co-chair. So the co-chair system, which was similar to last year, correct? Yeah, is going exactly. to be enacted for this semester. This, this semester here. Yep, this semester. This semester. Yep. Um, awesome. So co-chair system passes. Do we have to vote on elections chair? Yes. 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 So yes. nominations most likely. If you nominate someone, Paul. All is right. Nominated. So is there a motion on the floor to open up nominations for the elections yes, chair? So motion you, you motion, does that, do we have, have a second? second? Yeah. To, to it's a nominations, so you do. So okay. do we have a second to open up nominations for elections chair? Yes, okay. Okay. All right, Kenny, you got that? Yeah. Can I right, make a perfect. nomination? So um, now we will accept nominations for the elections chair for this co-chair election Whew. For, the <laughs> for the fall semester. So I'm just going to go around the room and you say all the names you have just to make it easier. Okay. If, if you don't have any names, you just say skip. Do this is any? just for elections chair? This is just for elections chair, not for the chairs. Do you have any? Oh, I'm nominating myself. All right, so Paul, Matt, do you have any recommendations? Paul abstain. Abstain. Naomi? Uh, Mike. Mike, Paul, um, hey, John, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm All right, Denny? Mike. I'm Mike as well. I was going to no nominate Mike earlier. But... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll nominate myself. Okay, Bree? <laughs> Paul. All right, uh, Kristen, any nominations for today for the uh, election chair position? Uh, Mike. Mike, okay, so and correct me if I'm wrong. Are y'all? So, what's going to happen is he's received two nominations, I received two nominations. Kenny has a poll, he's going to put it into the chat. Also, it's anonymous, you will vote as is. Um, Kenny, do you have both of us pulled up on that poll? Yes. <laughs> All right, so as I had poll for coach here. So as our executive assistant prepares the poll for the elections committee, We're doing it now. elections chair <laughs> position. <laughs> um, and can I add on to this for a uh, I'll let you finish, but afterwards, yes. So, I have really yeah. things after that. so once that happens, then the person elected will, pres will take over from you, and they will Run the meeting as is because that's their their acting co chair for the week until the next meeting elections held. So oh, sure, totally. that's that's how it huh? to be able to take it easy. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so. Who did stress on my back? Is it going to be in the teams chat? Yes, yes, yes it's it going to be in the teams chat. Send it now. All right, he just sent it out. Okay. Is it in our chat chat or is it in the meeting chat? In the meeting, meeting chat. chat. Oh. oh. Which one's see, me and everybody else. What's going on? Which one? Do it's just not the. Oh, yeah, it's two of them. I, yeah, we have two. Yeah. No, it's just it's two different things. There's one is the. the same. We're reading, running. Oh, I ha you have to. Hang on, hang on. Is the one that says chat only or the SGT yeah. Act 2023 24 chat? Oh, dang. The and if you just join the conversation, it needs to. Can't see it. All right, so uh, Kenny, can, can you remove that poll? <coughs> And put it into the SG 2324 chat right, as that's okay. the private one with the counselors. And I just want to recognize it is 3 p.m., so it is time for our open floor announcements. Shall there be any guests to our meeting? If there is not, we will continue this um, and finish it. And then we do have a slated time slot for Senator Bryan at 3 30, just so you know. Okay. I wonder who that is. I could do a public comment if that's okay. You're already on the agenda. Yeah, so I mean, it's up to you guys. I could do you're on the agenda. agenda. So yeah, you're on the agenda. agenda. Unless you want to leave her. I kind of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let us just finish this uh, poll real fast. I'm here. 
So everyone have access to it, correct? Oh, he's, he's rewriting. Okay. Okay, everyone Sorry. look at your general chat. Okay. Are you Thank calling? You. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Was that in the resolution? Did you finish the meeting? Yes. Okay. Okay, I got six. Okay. So there's two. Wait, who's not here? So Gabe, Tom, the link is still up. They can, but I mean, they're not here. I mean, okay, yeah, we got one. We got one. That was it. You're done. Yeah, yeah. We got ten. You got ten responses. And uh, Mike, you're the elections chair. Hey. Awesome. Thank you so much. So uh, uh, Mike will handle the elections chair of co-chairs for the next week. Yeah. Next week, whatever. Um, all right, perfect. So I'll pass the floor over to Mike. So next on our agenda is the election of committee chairs. This is also another resolution I've written. Okay, do you mind bringing that up? Well, it's also it's three o'clock. Oh, seven. Oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you. Nice. Um, okay. Did you want to do public comment? Well, you're on the agenda. Do you want to do public comment or your? I would love to. It'll only take about five minutes. Pretty easy. That's you want to stand in the camera for the Ooh, yeah, oh, camera. that way. Yeah, you have to be a media advisor here. Oh, yes. I did? Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's you, friend. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my mind, Jake. Right awesome, thanks, guys. So I'm pretty sure all of you know me, and if you don't, you'll eventually know me. My name's Senna Bryant. I was a former TSAC member. Um, but this semester, I am serving on the Auraria Voter Engagement Committee. Um, it's a tri-institutional committee that does what it says, where we just get voter engagement and all that good stuff. Um, we have a few events that are coming up that we would really like to partner up with not only MSU, SGAs, but of course the other ones. Nice shirt. <laughs> so pretty much the first round, or what I'm asking you guys to see if you guys would be interested in participating in is uh, Constitution Day. Constitution Day is a required uh, event that all schools, pretty sure all schools that receive uh, federal funding have to do. Um, and it's basically just about civic engagement. So this year, what we're going to do, um, most of the time it's usually in the Tivoli, but this year what we're going to do is we're going to actually have it out on the Lawrence Plaza lawn, the lawn that's in between the uh, art building and the uh, plaza. And it's going to be kind of like Rec Fest. So if you guys haven't gone to Rec Fest before, there's going to be a bunch of tables and a bunch of organizations set up. Everyone's going to go through, kind of talk to each person, get like a little passport stamp and then have some food. And it's just basically going to be about civic engagement and how uh, we can further you know, democratic practices on campus. So if you guys are interested in that, um, I would love to hear from you. If there's a couple of you guys I would also like to spearhead that, we can work together. Um, there's also a couple of other things such as finding uh, registration judges that will be coming up for uh, next year's primary. It is a paid position and it's through uh, the Denver County Clerk's Office. I worked as a registration judge once before. It is no joke. It is a lot of work, but you do make really good money on it, just so you guys are aware of that. And then if any of you guys are also uh, Jefferson County residents, uh, we are also looking for two student ambassadors to work um, as a paid gig. You get a monthly stipend as well, too. I believe it's a monthly stipend. Either way, you get paid. Um, but you will be basically working with our committee to also be more of a student ambassador to get people registered for voting, um, make sure that they know how and what and all of that good stuff when it comes to voting practices, civic engagement, all of that good stuff. So if any of you guys are interested, please email me or get in contact with me. I believe most of you guys know how to find me. Yeah. When is, the event, event, <laughs> is the event in the um, Constitution Day? Yeah. September 17th? Yes, September 17th. We're still kind of working out some of the uh, the kinks for that. We do have a flyer that is in production at the moment. Um, so once that's actually finalized, I'll send that to you guys. Um, and then I will also send you guys the, uh, what do you mean, the flyer for registration judges if anybody's interested in actually having like, you know, a paid gig job, so. It's on Sunday? No. No. <laughs> is one, is one day? Uh, maybe 18th? Hmm? Is one day? One day? For Constitution Day is one day. No, for the, the, the position. You the registration judge will go through the entire primary process. So um, next spring, when they were picking out, you know, the primary like candidates, and that would be that time. So I worked for the entire midterm elections. I did about four weeks here on campus, um, and that's pretty much what it was. So. How much was that? Um, I don't remember what I got, but I do know that for those three works that I 
uh, was working and made about twelve hundred dollars. So not bad. That's pretty good. Come on, John. You can yell for like four or five hours of work. Too. <laughs> yeah. So and then, like bad. you said, who was it through again? Um, the Auraria Voter Education Committee. <coughs> um, but if you're looking for the, uh, which I call it, the um, the judge position, and that's right. through the Denver County Clerk's Office. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank and you. For any of those positions, do you have to be a citizen? No, I don't think so. But let me double check on that one. I don't think so. At least for the registration judge and the student ambassador, I don't think you have to worry about. And then obviously, any like on campus event, you wouldn't have to worry about that either. So. I was talking just a little like the oh. position. I don't like, think so, but let me double check on that one. At least for the Denver County clerk one, I would imagine it might be, but let me double check. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Senator? Oh. I will email you. I there was a um Black Student Alliance had like a little coffee donut event. Um like I think it was uh last like, a few months ago. Um some of you may remember that this is like an instance where I got randomly attacked. It was you know, that aside, while I was at the event, I know this sounds like a big tangent, um, made some really good connections with the Denver NAACP. And the thing that they kept talking to me about uh, was like, oh, you're on campus? We should do a voting event on campus uh, to get people registered to vote. So I want to Denver or Rocky through. Mountain NAACP? I'm pretty sure it's Denver. Because we were, we were I know right there's a there. Rocky Mountain one. I just haven't seen the Denver one. But okay. either way, that's all. I might be mincing long. my words here, honestly, because um, I'm usually just connected through the BSA. But um, I have some of their contact. We can work. Yeah, that would, that would also be awesome, that. too. So cool. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank Thank you, Sarah. Excited Sarah. to see what happens with your guys' administration. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, yeah, we'll right. All right. See you soon, sisters. Oh, yeah, I'll be around. Don't even worry. I'll because be around. <laughs> have fun. Make good choices. Bring the puppies to campus when you can. Yes. Oh, yes. Friday, too, like, I'll go with them. I hate that I like, no, follow your dog and not you. That's Actually, right. Okay. Most people follow my dog's Instagram account and not me anyway, so Cheers. it's all good. Yeah. I got you. Do I? Just throw I that in there. Those you are one of those people, I know. <laughs> all right, I kind of thought it was funny. A little bit. Let's bring it back together. Let's let me get this tree. Oh, okay. So, um, please just let me have her. If there's anyone else, any other members of the public who wants to speak, you guys have to. So you have six minutes until public comment ends, so please make yourself known at that time. Let's move on to the next item on the agenda. That's going to be number three or two, resolution select committee chairs. This is also um, authored by me, but if anyone else would like to read it, um, oh, would you like to read it? I endorsed it. I'd be happy to read it. Please do. Okay. okay. Save me the voice string. All right. Unless everyone's read it. Okay, so no one said that. All right. Uh, <laughs> the Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council, SGTSAC, commences its fall session as the Student Advocacy Council of the Metropolitan State University of Denver, aiming to appoint chairs for our standing committees. Pursuant to the SGTSAC Constitution, these committees must be filled at the beginning of the semester. Therefore, SGTSAC will hold elections for the following committees, the Budget, the Sustainability, Judiciary, and Public Relations. Whereas all members of the council shall have an equal opportunity to self-nominate or nominate others and actively campaign for the position of chair of the SGT SAC standing committees. Scroll a little bit. Thank you. There, you can go good. Um, a little further right. down. It's like I'm driving. All right. Um, whereas as a microcosm of society, our student government must uphold democratic principles in our work to contribute to the Constitution and maintain uh, oh, and maintenance of a just society. This principle extends to the conduct of standing committee elections. Whereas this resolution operates under the assumption that CR1 resolution to declare and facilitate fall 2023 SG co SGTSAC co chair elections was fully passed, and it was earlier. Um, therefore, be it further resolved, the elections chair shall initiate the nominations process for the following standing committee chairs in the specified order the judiciary, the budget, public relations, and sustainability. Therefore, be it further resolved, the elections process for these positions shall proceed as follows. One, council members may nominate fellow council members for the chairmanship. All nominations require a second. The nomination process shall continue even if there is only one nominee. Each nominee, in the order of their nomination, shall have one minute to present their candidacy for, uh, for the chair of the selected committee. Following the committee's statements, following the nominee's statement, sorry, the council will conduct a five minute Q&A session with the nominee. The process in section four will be repeated for all nominees until each one has been given a chance to present their statement and undergo council questioning. Once all nominees have been presented, the elections chair shall instruct the executive assistant to conduct an anonymous poll that shall be sent to the council. In the case of multiple candidates, the council will be asked to vote for one candidate. Uh, the candidate receiving the majority of the votes will be elected as chair. In the case of the one candidate running unopposed, the council will conduct a simple yes or no vote. The candidate receiving the majority of yes votes will be elected chair of the committee. 
Once all voting is complete, the executive assistant and the election chair will announce the newly elected chair. And, and finally, this process shall be repeated until all standing committee chairs have been filled. And is there any, oh, here we are. Uh, therefore, be it further resolved, once all standing committee chairs have been filled, council members may appoint themselves to the, committee, uh, to the committees under section four of the constitution, therefore be it enacted. Reading. And a um, little context real quick. Section 4 of the Constitution says anyone can join any committee except judiciary. The judiciary chair appoints um, a third of the council to that committee. Well, so we vote for them. So you vote for the judiciary chair and then you will appoint he or he or she shall appoint the next person. three members to join that committee. So you can join budget, you can join sustainability, you can join PR uh, without needing you just appoint yourselves. That's what we did last year. All right, let's open up to questions. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. John, go ahead. I'm okay, confused. Back up to the so, list of committees. Um, so does so we have chairs for each committee, and then we have the chair that runs the chair of the meeting. Chairs. Are we which no, chair? They're, they, they're not chair of chairs. No. <laughs> chair they're, chair, of they're chair of uh, this meeting. Actually. Yeah. So like so, there are co-chairs who run the meeting, and then you have the chairs for the committees. So that's who will give the updates when we're like in the section right here where it says boarding committee. Yeah, you can be both. But, oh, yeah. got you. Okay. Just like you're doing now. Yes, Paul. Okay. You hand up? Oh, I was just going to. Any other questions on the content of this resolution? Uh, just to be clarified, so we're going to vote on this resolution, yes, we're gonna vote. Day, and then yes. we're going to vote on, like, nominate and vote for whoever we want for each committee. Yes, so okay. what we're going to do, we're going to yay or nay this resolution. If it passes, then I'm going to open nominations for judiciary. Oh, judiciary. We're going to do that process right. outlined above. Um, and then we will vote. Kenny has polls in there. We're going to do the same thing we did for the election chair voting, so have that app ready. Uh, and uh, we will do that until all four of these chairs are appointed or elected. Uh, let's do Paul and then. If you have a question, I have a motion. So, uh, okay. I want to okay. Um, if someone gets nominated, can you like, yeah. remove yourself? Yes, you can yeah. decline the nomination. Okay. <laughs> just asking. Just asking. That's a good question. Yeah. We have a committee chair for these committees, like job descriptions. We do. It's in the Constitution. Should we go through those? Room? I want a motion that we proceed with the uh, with voting on this and with the course of action laid out. We can all we all have plenty of time to familiarize ourselves with our new roles here. I think that you know what we don't have is an infinite Friday, right? Yeah, and so you know this will be a long. This is the kind of long process we've outlined, and we just want to put one foot in front of the other. I think so. I motion we close discussion and bring this baby to a vote, and then get it rolling. I second that. Again, that's been seconds. Um, we'll just do all in favor say aye. Aye. Um, all opposed. Any abstentions? And then, Kristen, what is your vote? Aye. Is unanimous. The resolution passes. Okay, so moving on. Um, okay, this is gonna be fun. Um, do you mind? I need to let me pull this up on here. I need to go through this process as well. I have a question. So, how about? I mean, do we have like a they pulled up the job description each to be? It's in the constitution. It? I think we should just briefly go over yeah. what you're going to be nominating yourself. <laughs> well, so, okay, can you mind pulling up the constitution real quick while I? Uh, okay. well, well, yes. Right just, just, right. Right. Yes. Well, Kenny's yeah. amazing. Let me just say. Yes. yes. Kenny, we're, we're opting for a raise for you. Okay. I'm not yes. saying it's gonna happen, but we're trying. Not correct. What are we doing right now? So right now we're waiting for, we're going to do judiciary, um, but right now we're going to go over, quickly go over the roles that entails, because it's important you know what you're going to, and at the retreat today we did not go over the constitution, Sorry. so we do need to do this, in fact, because um, also we made sure, we just verified that people have access to the share point, people didn't have access to it previously, so we're going to go over that real quick. You amended constitution, yes, please. You know what you are? We skipped over uh, number three. No, nope, we're still on number two, and number three will be next. Oh, I thought we had jumped down because Cindy had uh, yeah, Cindy she, had spoke. Yes, we put, she, she has uh, withdrawn herself from the agenda. She used public comment and said to get her. Got you, so. okay. Forty-two minutes. Here, we're, we're going to go quick. I don't know. If we'll I got to leave no matter what at 4.30 because that's when my meter ran out, so. Oh. 
I'm trying to get these. Dr. Brown? Are you talking about the Judiciary Committee specifically? Yes, we're going to go over the job description. Okay. Can I have, I have some input or feedback here um, for those who were here earlier today. Um, we met with Dr. Lee. We have an external consultant that we're working with, and we've sent him all of these documents. Again, he, he led a deep dive into student government back in 2019, 2020, and they, uh, a team wrote an evaluative report on structure and all those things before the TSAC model was formed. We're now consulting with him again because it's been three years and we have presented some of the challenges that we've had over the past couple of years and some of our successes too, right? And the things that y'all have accomplished. The Judiciary Committee is one that I feel really strongly about that we need to reevaluate the structure mm -hmm. and the way that it operates based on the challenges that occurred last year um, and the way that it played out. And we have a model that we are wanting to propose on what that looks like. Um, that would be an external accountability committee that wouldn't be comprised of folks within TSAC because there is a conflict of interest. You all having a committee within your own structure, yeah. holding each other accountable caused a lot of conflict, right? That is true. And has in the past, when there have been other judiciary committees here in student government for the past decades, right? And so, him and Armando and I talked about a model that we would like to propose to you. We didn't get to that today, but it, it is in direct alignment with the um, what are they called? accountability Stand shared agreements and the accountability standards that we would like to propose to you all, but we're not there yet. Um, and so that's what I'd like to ask us to pause on specifically because we want to be proactive and not reactive and not set up a structure that we already know didn't work last year. So can I respectfully request that we pause on that one? So um, it's required in the Constitution. That's what, what I'm referencing this document off. Okay. Does electing a judiciary chair change that change that yeah, structure? Also, it needs, that requires a constitutional amendment that needs to be passed right. to this council. Right, that's why we want to propose it to you all, to, but we're just not there yet. But mm -hmm. yes, it would have to be adopted in the Constitution in the way that would work. I mean, you can have someone, but I just, I think that the way that the structure that we're talking about, it wouldn't actually have someone from TSAC running the accountability committee. I think what they could do is just elect the chair and then be a liaison to us to send it over to. Okay. So that way we just have. I want to that because I agree. Like you know, if we just forego the description, we won't have this problem. We can elect somebody who will seat as the chair on that committee, reformed, assuming that that goes through the process you're talking about um, instead of like instilling like what you're saying we know it might need to challenge into the new chair right we elect someone who will sit in that spot but we don't say this is going to be the same as last year right we open that up for that discussion but that discussion is going to have to happen at a different meeting because we only have yeah we only have 38 meeting. minutes and i think that if we were to just and i'm not trying to rush things i'm just trying to move through this resolution if we were just elect those spots we can all um, give ourselves some grace and learning what they are and coming to understand them and if necessary change them. You know, um, anybody who's interested in holding a committee spot can nominate themselves or nominate others and we can all get out of here by four. <laughs> okay, so well, real quick, um, I kind of agree with Paul. I think we should move forward and then come to an agreement or amend, like amend the Constitution once, once you guys are ready to present. Uh, so we are electing someone for this chair, then. So the, yeah, they can just serve as a liaison at this point. Fair enough. We'll, we're gonna, we'll fix the amendment as we go along. Or the we're we're going to move on as is. Then. Yep. So yes. we won't. I will, I will go looking at this then for these for this for this one chair committee. So I'll open up nominations for judiciary chair. Um, you just raise your hand and you nominate someone, and then all our nominations for a second. Paul. I want to nominate. Reed. I think that's a good yeah. nomination. All right, there's been a nomination for Re. A second. Uh, there's a second, second nomination for Re. Re, do you accept your nomination? Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <about> okay. <laughs> the name could change. Re. True. It may not be a. That's fine. Yeah. I'm happy to meet yeah. with yeah. and whatever and try to problem solve.
Say a minute speech. So oh, like, yeah, like, I like, am sure. the boss of two bratty sons. <laughs> I am always the referee. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Listen, I'm happy to try to be unbiased in a position like that if I have to present us to other external groups so that we can come to resolution and work through problems. Really happy to do that. And, you know, I have all of you in my heart and I'll do that purposefully and respectfully. All right, well, awesome. You don't need to use up all your time. We have nope. <laughs> now we have five minutes Q and A session. Does anyone have any questions for me? In this matter, going once, going twice. All right, we better hold your peace. Um, council invokes not to use all its five minutes, so we will continue on. Uh, Kenny, do you mind putting a vote in the chat? Oh, can we just? <laughs> I feel like this could be done verbally. <laughs> All right, so that's fine. We we would do that. <laughs> do you can we go against something like that? I I I all I the motion. Motion. So a motion is just as is, is just like a resolution. It's just not as detailed. So I motion we vote on this verbally. Perfect. Is there a second to that motion? A second. A second. A second. All bears say aye. 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 All right. Any noes? No noes. Okay. So we move on to a verbal vote. Um, the the vote is yes or no. Um, in which. Re is elected to judiciary. <coughs> um, all in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> all opposed say no. Kristen, what is your vote? Naomi, what is your vote? My vote is also aye. Two eyes <laughs> is unanimous. Congratulations, Re. You are the judiciary chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got you. Ooh, Lee. Lee. <laughs> Lee gets the re up. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to budget. That is the next one on the list. I will just give a brief synopsis of this. That's what we're going to do now. I said pulling it up. You're in charge of our budget. You're in charge of presenting our budget. You're in charge of um, our funds, various funds that we allocate to stores <coughs> and um, other things. You can read the description as much, but basically you're in charge of the numbers. So I will open up nominations for this role. Paul? Well, uh, I want to nominate myself. All right. Is there a second to Paul's nomination? I'll second it. All right. Cool. cool. Will you hand it next? I'd like to nominate Ali. I will second that motion as well. Nice. Ali. Oh. All right. Is there any other nominations for this role? Everyone's got this. All right. In the order of which um, they were nominated, Paul, you are up first. You have a minute to sure. give a reason why you should be budget chair. Sure. So um, y'all know I'm an organizer when it comes to um, running organizations. Uh, you know, I'm not just a member of the student government, but I'm actually a member of SDS and um, a national organization. Um, the the well, ACAC is joining a national organization. All that said, we move a lot of money. We have a lot of money that we have to look over for events. Um, I use Excel. I do a lot of fundraising. Um, yep, I'm adept at Excel. I can fundraise. Um, I, I, my, my biggest thing I think is assessing, you know, how, like, are we using our funds to the best of our ability to serve students? Are we misusing them? Is what I would bring into this position. Is that question? Is like, are we using our funds the best way we could? Should we really be doing that? I don't know. But I'll kind of raise questions like that. Bring, you know, I know y'all might understand me as a progressive, more liberal leaning person. Um, that doesn't mean I won't bring like a fiscal mindset to the role of chair as well. So. Your time is up, Paul. Thank you so much. We have enough five minutes of discussion from the council to ask Paul questions. Not all at once. I have, Jenny, you, have you have a lot going on. Yeah. So much. And I feel like the budget is so... I didn't nominate myself to the budget, but I also have a lot going on. Um, how would we be confident that the things that you have going on outside this place are not going to interfere. It's a good question. Um, I have learned uh, through like the last year and a half about um, what it looks like to take on too much. And I'm one of those people who's like, I hear about an opportunity, you'll hear me go, yeah, I'm there, you know, unless it's tabling an application, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right? That's just a joke. Um, but, you know, where I elected, I plan to make this my full priority. I mean, yeah, I participate in other ways in student government, but this, as chair of the budget committee, that would be my primary focus. It's having weekly meetings. Um, and it's not like I would be jumping at the bit to join any other committees, really, because of how important that one role is. Really good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Paul, how, um, let's say your committee is made up of three people, three people underneath you. And then 
if you felt really strongly about something and everyone else disagreed with you, how would you resolve that? Oh, democracy. You know, I yeah. have to humble myself in the understanding that uh, I can be wrong, and maybe this is one of those times. Okay. <laughs> it's happened before, and you know, while initially it can be a kind of like a stinging feeling, once you're on the other end of it, you've grown. So, I think I would uh, challenge myself to approach the situation a little bit more open-mindedly, and maybe try and um, step outside of the problem and my perspective of it as best a person can, if that's even possible. Okay. Thanks. Well, real quick question, Paul. Can you tell me again why you feel qualified for the budget committee? I've, uh, over the last year, I've been managing a lot of organizational, um, like, budgetary work, not like budget committees, but um, presently I'm working to organize a Colorado Conference for Progressive Student Power in Boulder, um, and we're fundraising and managing funds for that, paying, you know, um, paying uh, people to bring food, uh, uh, caterers, sorry, the word escapes me, um, uh, flying in speakers and stuff like that. And I'm also working on the national convention to plan, or I'm working on the, the committee to plan the national convention um, for SDS. And, you know, uh, a lot of it, there's a decent amount of funds, and we just have to be able to, um, you know, color code it, work in a team of people to understand the general picture of it, but also be able to dive into the particular and, like, you know, pay uh, ASL translator or something. So I understand both sides of that. Dr. Barone and then uh, Reed. How would you ensure that you're able to navigate um, fiscal policies of the university and systems that we might need to use um, in order for you to um, be able to oversee and manage? I come up to an area that I don't know anything about, you know, which is a lot of that institutional stuff. Uh, the moment a question comes up, I head straight to my good advisors, Dr. Barone. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I shoot a little email. Okay. Not to say that I would render you the chair of the budget okay. commission, committee, but I would, you know, I'd say, look, we want to do this kind of big thing. Is this possible? You know, let's 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 talk about it. And I know last year there were times where I'm like, it seems like we're just here, no right out of the gate. But I think moving forward, there would be like a uh, I don't know, more cool aesthetic way of going about it. Like, uh, huh? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> I just, I mean, ultimately, I, I just rely on you guys a lot more, I guess, from that position in, in exploring those ideas. And I, I see the role of budget chair is not so much generating those ideas, but as um, uh, facilitating the ideas brought forward by the council. I agree. Yes. Okay, Paul, I have a hard question. Yes. I am as liberal as any peacock walking around the zoo, but. I feel like it's important that we are able to work across divides as best we can. And if there's a chance to leverage a budget we have for some kind of event with another group that might not be so yeah. politically liberal, would you be willing to work with them to kind of bring pots of money together so we can have a better outcome? Certainly. And I will say it's been done before and I'd be willing to do it again. Last year we worked on the housing event uh -huh. and the people that came to that housing event were very much people who on a personal political note, I fundamentally disagree with a um, lot of a lot of big time landlords on stage. Not to get too into it, right? But we held that event. People got a lot of good information from it. People got a, good, a lot of good information about about discrimination for renters and accessibility rights and new renters' rights under the like the Biden administration has changed some things for renters. So um, it was a good event. Did I agree with everybody there? Hell no. But I was happy to have it. All right, we have 15 seconds, Naomi, you can make a comment. What? What? You're on mute, Naomi. I'll read, I'll, I'll read out her comment. Like, that's enough, but thank you. All right, Paul, oh. your time is up. Do you mind stepping in the call and playing on the other room? Nope. Quick question while he's leaving for everyone here. Are we allowed to deliberate at, while they're outside? or It's just and questions. Just, as, well, questions with them. Okay. All right. All right, Alex, once you start talking, you have a minute to give yourself, not make yourself a success. Cool. Um, so I think I'd be a perfect fit for this position because, so looking back into the experience that I've had, so starting off with the organization that I'm part of, my fraternity, um, I've had the opportunity to be part of uh, the treasurer position, which also includes um, creating budgets, presenting them, um, what it's going to be used for, and exactly like an itemized uh, as to exactly what's being used and what's necessary. 
Um, aside from that, I also hold the current position for student organizations funding um, up at the CMEI office. Um, that also has a lot to do with budgeting. Well, not necessarily budgeting, but it has a lot to do with um, seeing through the presentations and seeing what is necessary to ensure that the money that they're looking for is required. And um, looking into it as well, I basically already know what we can, what is looked for when presenting a budget to ensure that whoever I'm presenting it to um, is able to understand like what key things we need and to make sure that we just understand, or they understand that exactly what the money is being used for and everything like that. Thank, Thank you, Alejandro. All right, council, the council up to you. Five minutes for questions. Uh, we would do Will, Matt, and me. How can you make us confident that you will fulfill your duties in that position when you're not like tied to like your fraternity or whatever other external uh, responsibilities you have? Yeah, well, I mean, definitely one thing, if I didn't think I was capable of doing it, I most likely wouldn't have ran for this position, um, you know, as, as a counselor in student government. So seeing that, I definitely feel like I have the capacity to um, maintain it all, especially seeing like a, the amount of things I was able to balance in the past, considering everything that I was a part of, aside from this uh, specific position. And um, I just feel like, uh, as, you know, considering like my schoolwork and my job and everything, it seems like everything, I've been able to have a balance. So a lot of this isn't necessarily new work or, so I'm kind of familiar as to how the things go. So I'm able to uh, go about it more smoothly. Matt with me. Um, how would you, it sounds like you have a lot of experience in presenting these. Mm -hmm. How would you help your fellow council members and the best practices to present to you as the budget committee? Uh, so do you mean as in like, how am I supposed to like uphold myself to ensure that I'm trustworthy or? Well, like I've not done as many like presentations for budget requests. Uh -huh. um, so would you be able to provide like new council members and stuff with like points of like what's best practices for presenting to you for budget requests? Uh, yeah, definitely. So you know, like I have mentioned, like there have been times where I have to sit uh, in these presentations and like looking at the rubric, um, you know, it's I'm aware of what is that the person sitting through the presentation is looking for. So I can definitely point out to so like, oh, these are the main details that they look for. So let's try to ensure that we, you know, hit, hit the nail right on what they're looking for to ensure that they're satisfied and are allowed to give us the money. Cool. Um, I have a comment slash question. Well, I'll do a comment because um, you need to time. I think it's pretty invaluable that we have the person who runs the student work budgets nominating themselves to this position because last year, at least I, what I can tell, it was tough as budget chair last year to know all like the secrets of like CMI has some funding we can use and where to grab funding from. So that's just my comment to make. I think it's pretty it's pretty cool that you're in both positions. I think it'll service vastly valuable. So and my comment was just to say another comment that it really uh, on its face it appears that you're very amenable to sitting down with people and going over details and being very open about it, which I appreciate. Yes. Um, my one comment, I think it would be very wise to select this individual um, to have this position because they... Yes, have questions and comments. Questions and oh, so wait. Um, this, yeah, it's a comment. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, I just think it'd be very, uh, they're a valuable asset because you have, you're, it's like a fresh start, right? I feel like um, this is going to create a lot of great perspective um, for students to feel welcome coming to you because um, the just exposure to, um, I don't even know how to explain this. Basically, you don't have any beef with any organizations. So they're going to feel welcome coming to you as a fresh person. So, Dr. Barron. The same question that I asked Paul, I'd like to ask you, Alejandro. Um, how would you work within the university's fiscal policies and systems and to be able to ensure that, um, you know, that you're not only understanding those, but able to navigate those and advocate for students too, while also 
towing that line of, of being in compliance with the university. Yeah, so when it comes to the position that I hold with the student organizations funding team, um, I'm very close with the supervisor there, um, Chi Wan. So mm -hmm. she, yeah, I'm pretty sure Chi Wan's like very familiar with like all the fiscal year and stuff like that. So I can definitely go to her for some help and advice. And then from there, um, just try and like bring back the, or be the bridge from us and CMEI to ensure that we have like those details and stuff. Policies and procedures yeah. and Thank you. Council, you have 38 seconds. Do you wish to forego 38 seconds? Well, I'll have to hold my hand. All right. We will uh, end it off there. Alex, do you mind letting Paul back in? And then, uh, Kenny, do you mind setting up a vote in our chat? Oh, tell me. Do verbal. Can we just do yeah. verbal? Well, yeah, there's really? two, and it's you know, it's an anonymous. Or it's a. Uh, Can we wait out? Or? No, no, bring him in. Oh. It's an anonymous vote in the chat. So that's how it is. So, um, yes, there's now, Council, there's a new poll in the chat. Please vote for who you select to be budget chair. We're allowed to vote as well. Right? Yes, you, how many is allowed to vote? Thank you. It's not from Washington, it's Baker, and then I will go stand next to you. I already voted, and it's such a thing. It's, it's, I don't know. Enough. Just ignore it. It, I, it's, ignore it. it still shows up. It's okay. Great. Everyone's in. All right, awesome. The votes have been tallied, uh, and I will say congratulations to Alejandro. You've been elected budget chair for, for the uh, state government. All right, friends, thank you. Um, we will continue on. Public relations chair is up next. This is your, this is the social media people. Um, this is the person who's going to run our events as well. Be like the point person for events. Um, I will suggest having good good. This is a very committee that needs a lot of support. I will say, um, and then you run any other kind of PR for student government. So we will now open up nominations for PR chair. Anyone social media savvy? <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'll nominate Paul because he's already got a lot of uh, experience with like events and getting people to come together. And yeah, Paul, you're good at that. People, like he said, so I feel like that's a good. That's a good yeah. And you get good at money, apparently, too. So, yeah. I second that. Thank you. Um, um, there's been a nomination for Paul and a second for Paul. Oh, I'm not I respectfully decline. Oh. My social media plate is too big. I do social media stuff for Daily Works and all right. I have a nomination. So oh, nomination. Yes. I believe we should nominate Matt. I was going to say. I feel like you're good in oh, yeah. relationship building, and I feel like with a good team, wink, wink, um, you can really, <laughs> you can really help um, promote our social team, media. Team iPhone, too. Yes. True. So I, there's been a nomination for Matt. Is there a second for that? I'll I'll second second Matt. Matt. There's been a second. Matt, what do you say? He's like. I need support with some of the social media aspects. Um, Frank, go with that. So is that yes or no? I'll go yes. All right. The nomination <laughs> accepted. Paul, go ahead. Oh, okay, cool. I was just going to say something to go to him accept him. I'm willing to be on the committee with you and help you with those things. Uh, on. Oh, oh uh, okay. lovely. Uh, cool. Yeah. So um, is there any other nominations? Once or twice. All right. Matt, you have a minute on the floor um, to why why should you be PR chair? Um, well, I'll admit I would need some assistance with more the social media side of it. But as far as PR, I actually have a list of like all faculty and staff on campus and all their contact information that I've created. Um, I've been on this campus, my undergrad and graduate program, and part of something I did in my undergrad and I continue my graduate program is to combat the imposter syndrome piece. Um, instead of trying to know everything, I've tried to know who knows what or which departments kind of hold what information and power or resources. That sounds great. All right. Awesome. Uh, we will now open up to five minutes of council Q&A. Reed, start us off. Matt. I'm talking to you on this learning edge. It'll be great. You know so much already. I think this would be a fabulous and you'd represent us so well. So thank you. Well, would you consider yourself tech savvy? I'm fairly tech savvy. Uh, John, 
a comment. I think you would be great at that because you've been responsible for me receiving stipends, connections. Anytime I had an idea that I wanted to throw by Matt, I throw it to him and next year, you know, we walk into the solution. And I'm like, what's so going nice. on? So he's really good about that. That's great. And so I'll end it off here, Matt. Um, I fully intend on joining the PR committee. I have access to the Instagram currently. Um, and that's something I can easily take over for you um, as you see fit. And I make, right. I'm a pretty, I've learned very quickly how to make marketing material. So right. Cam is very nice for that. So uh, any other things? Naomi? No, that's good. All right. Um, hearing the same. Does Chris know anything? That's true. Nope. All right. Okay. So the council for grows. It's time. We will just do this since there's only one candidate. It's a yes or no. All in favor uh, of Matt's being elected to um, public relations chair. Say aye. 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 Any nays? Abstentions? All right. With that, uh, Matt, congratulations. <laughs> Hey, last but not least, sustainability chair. So we move on to that. This is the last sustainability committee. So sustainability chair is um, <laughs> you will work directly with ASCP. That's our on-campus partner who is our student fees pay for um, their office and their kind of programs that run sustainability. Um, so that's exactly, and you will also manage the uh, green purchasing fund that uh, SGTSEC operates. So with that, I will open nominations for this role. Paul to me. Go ahead. Oh, and then he's going to Yeah, I, I just wanted to nominate myself and then say for the same reasons about the budget committee. Cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there a second for Paul's nomination? Second. Three. All right. Awesome. This is Naomi. Uh, I nominate myself as well. Okay. Awesome. This is for sustainability. This is for yeah, sustainability. Right. I second that. All right. There's been a second for Naomi's nomination as eight, well. Eight, eight. Naomi. 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 Sorry. Um, any other nominations at this time? Going once, going twice. All right, awesome. Um, in the order of which the nominee was presented, um, Paul, you will go first. Naomi, do you, Naomi, do you mind stepping out to the hall with me? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. All right. All right, and then Paul, you will have a minute on the clock. Starting now. If you want to know my position on sustainability, look to the recent, I think it was in Minnesota court case, but where some young people just recently won uh, their right to clean air and clean water. I think that people should um, have those things. I think that the present, uh, the present uh, escalation with uh, the climate crisis, like it's already full on in many places and we're seeing it become uh, greater here. Like the fact that we've experienced like 11 of the hottest days in, the, in history in a row. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff like that lends me, uh, really lights a fire to my ass, so to speak, uh, to do something about it and to hold institutions that contribute to that uh, to account. And that means that if the university is, you know, talking about carbon neutrality, we need to make sure that's actually happening. We need to look at what their plan is. And, you know, I'm no genius on this stuff, so I'd look to the good experts at ASCP, some of whom I've already talked to and know, like, and have a good relationship with Moving into the semester will be great. All right, good work on time. Council, I open up to you guys. Questions, comments for Paul? Is there a will? Um, you pulled the Minnesota example, but I didn't see any direct ties with you in that. Yeah, the minute I, I started just trying to decide what I wanted to do within the minute. Um, but I will say that I think that people have a right to a clean air and clean water. And I think that it should be protected uh, up to, like, um, in the case of Minnesota, uh, they they uh, were able to uh, win, I think, it was some sort of like a legal case. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't want to speak too out of, out of pocket here. It's just worth looking up. It's a kind of precedent setting thing. Young people yeah. winning a court case around climate okay. climate change, climate justice. Okay, then I misunderstood. Okay. Yeah, and I would say that, you know, when we talk about the impacts of um, climate change, it disproportionately impacts, um, it disproportionately impacts uh, nationally oppressed communities. And so if you look at like Suncor here in Colorado, or, you know, um, I, so I, I think all of that needs a kind of nuanced approach. I don't know, it's probably complicated things more than I answer anything. All right, we'll go read the map. Okay. Do you have any ideas of, or carrying on some initiatives that started last year, or maybe something that you think TSAC could take on for sustainability this year? Yeah, what I see is a much closer partnership with the SCP. 
And so last year they were doing all this stuff. We had Earth Week and we kind of went. Some of us went. Yeah. Great. Yes. Yeah. Great photo shoot and all that. Yeah. I want to do more than just that. I want to, you know, be in there with them uh, as as chair of this committee. I would assume be in there with them, you know, a couple times a month at least, meeting with them just to kind of talk about like where are you guys at, what's going on, and if one of you were to ask me what's ACP doing this month, I should be able to tell you, right? And so that close to the working partners. Okay. You're going to have fun and co-host some of their events. Nice. Matt than me. Um, so in part with working with uh, the sustainable sustainability, um, would you also be open to working on projects such as um, finding sustainable garden space on campus that could feed into our food pantry? Yeah, I know there are folks who are interested in that kind of work, and um, you know I'd be happy to elevate it and advance that. Um, I know we already have a, 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 at least one garden. I think there's a rooftop one as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I know uh, Councillor Alex who looked into this a little bit last year. Um, so, you know, we wouldn't have to necessarily reinvent the wheel, but let's talk to the people who are doing that, see what we can do to advance those efforts. Huh? Um, I'll go next then. Will, um, I think this is perfect. I think you'd be perfect for this um, in terms of your activism. I felt last year the sustainability chair or like that that committee did not do a whole lot. And I feel like it could be, there's so much more that could have been done with that um, chairmanship. And I think you have the tools, you have the ideas, um, you know the people in ASCP. Um, I think you could really kind of get that committee going, um, as we say. And it's really a clean slate because I can't remember, I can't name a single thing those two did last year. So it's green birch. That was your prior. That was, that was your prior. That wasn't last year. Oh, well, carrying it out and bringing the learnings into the CMI. Yeah, yeah. But it could, there's more than that. that could happen, I feel like. So, Will, and then um, Bill could talk. So, quick question. Hit me. Do you have a history of uh, sustainability? Like, uh, what I mean by that is, like, any legis legislation or uh, bills that you try to pass or support or any type of, like, background with sustainability? Um, I've been, um, I guess, an environmental conserva uh, conservationist since I was like 10 years old. Mm -hmm. I remember on my walk home from school to my grandma's house, I would have a trash bag and I'll, like just pick up trash on my way home. <laughs> like that's just a silly little thing. But that's continued in my adult life where um, I regularly participate in like river cleanups, not just with the SCP, but uh, with uh, other community groups here in Denver, not even politically related, but um, and I, I don't and I don't necessarily see it as much as political action as like, you know, hey, that's what we do as members of like as, as conscious members of a community as we work to try and keep it clean and respect it. Um, yeah, well, that's my history with it. No legislation or nothing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, 50 seconds on the clock. Is there any other dying questions? Oh wait, I want to add one more thing, legislation yeah. speaking. Last year we passed a condemnation of the cash awareness decision mm -hmm. that within it carried a condemnation of any um, any uh, damage to the environment, and especially of, uh, of uh, indigenous nations' land, um, done by private or public entities. And in doing so, we considered examples like you've seen in Hawaii that has led to the recent fires. You know, uh, the the total uh, devastation, both before it that preceded it and uh, caused it, and also the the water that's been poisoned there for some time. And so, um, yeah, we talked about it last year. It may not have been um, the prevailing thing, but we did focus on it a little bit. Thank awesome. You. And with that, the council time is up. Paul, do you mind uh, going in the hall and grabbing the ammo? Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. Appreciate it, John. Great. Oh, it's getting hot. Let's say Nate. Oh, Nate, I'm going to hit you if you don't. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Joe Boss, you got eight minutes. Go. Yes, go All right. So as a person of STEM, I have already taken issues in conservation biology. So I have a very firm educational background in what sustainability looks like. Personally, I'm just really looking at this from a level of not only embracing my indigeneity here on campus and applying that for my resume and future job connections as well, because I do want to become an environmental consultant on some degree while implementing indigenous knowledge. I want the opportunity to be able to bring that to our school to show that I am capable of implementing that here before I can take that out into the real world. I see this as an opportunity to do that and to like fully also present myself as an indigenous student slash person, a uh, woman here in TSAC and in the sustainability department and then bring that representation here um, 
within our uh, organization here. And I feel like that's going to inspire students, um, hopefully later, and also students in STEM and just be able to bring in, um, just bring just bring it all together. So um, I have this, uh, I have the experience to be able to do it and I just want the ability to apply it. Thank you. So lovely. Thank you so much. All right, Council, you have a five minute Q&A session for Naomi. Go on. So I call him. I think okay. one of the things with sustainability that they don't talk enough about with women is the Diva Cup versus the confines and Cotex. Okay. Because the Diva Cup helps with the environment, it's reusable. And that's something that should be brought up to encourage women as another option. Um, can I state? Make a statement back to that. That's the question comment directed to you. So yes. Okay. So um, agree and disagree. So we do have the perspective. Yes, it is good for the environment, but we also have organic tampons that are made for us that we can advocate for as well because we have to consider the fact that some women that if we put a diva cup in, sometimes it's irritable and it doesn't cause. It can cause a lot more um, messy damages and a lot of like other people don't think about that. So we have to consider from a woman's perspective as to which product works best for each body. Um, also, we can't always afford to continue to buy new underwear every month. They think gets ruined so also understandable if they need uh, a tampon or pattern whatever awesome. but there are sustainable options so you know will you next i got two questions so uh, the first one um thank you for sharing that you want to lead your life in that that path and i think that's amazing my question is how would you dedicate yourself to your role in that committee without uh you know losing sight or losing track and not doing other things. Yeah, so I thought about this a lot actually. And so how I've learned how to do it and Cynthia seen me be all over the place. You guys have all seen me be all over the place. And my what I've learned through this is that to pick things that are intertwined within one another. So you're basically doing everything at the same time. Oh, so double, triple, quadruple dipping, but you're access, you're completing a bunch of things all at once. And they say that there's no such thing as multi multitasking. Um, they call it like switch tasking instead or um, task switching instead, but I disagree because I'm able to like spread this um, information. So what I do in STEM directly intervenes with like sustainability. Um, what I want to do in my job directly goes into sustainability. And since this would be contributing to my career, I would prioritize this because it's going to create the most benefit to me, um, which then in return also benefits you. So it's basically a symbiotic relationship, I do believe. Listen, I wasn't that great in that class, but I'm pretty sure it's symbiotic. <laughs> um, so what gets good for me is good for the team here. So. Awesome. And then my second question would be, other than your um, experience in STEM and like uh, environmental protection, or, sorry if I misphrased that, but oh, you're uh, good, yeah. what other experience do you have with uh, sustainability? So this was a really cool exercise. Um, and honestly, that entire class gave us a bunch of different ways to do it. So they have this thing called, uh, you can actually, it's a website. I don't know what the website's called, but I have access to it on a document. But you go in there and you basically see as an individual, like you put in like what you do on a daily basis. Um, and then at the end of it, it shows if everyone lived like you, how many planets it would take to sustain us. So that one was a real big eye opener for me. Um, it shows you like if you use like the gap or if you use like a train, a motorcycle, electric bike, yada, yada, yada. Um, if you recycle, if you don't recycle, if you use glass, if you use plastic, how much you go to eat out, like things like that. So I understand it from a very broad perspective of sustainability. Not to mention, I also understand um, how to influence people in a way that is not overstepping boundaries and also helping to influence them in a way that directly affects them. So they understand that like, if you contribute, you're also helping yourself. If you contribute this, you're helping other people, you're helping other parts of the world that you care about. Because I do understand that in the world, we have this um, assimilation that is brought onto us that we are very selfish. If it doesn't have to do with us, we're not gonna contribute to it. So if you make it politely about somebody else and how it can help their lives individually, then they're gonna be more likely to wanna do it as long as you come at it in a way that is respectful and creating a safe environment for them to explore that without feeling like they're belittled. Thank you. Yeah, your question. Do you have any initiatives or ideas of what you want to do with this committee at this point? Um, yes. So my first one would be when um, I would like to team up with the student. Uh, what do we call it? The student success slash diversity. And when we give these organizations to potentially hold events and also with the events coordinator, I would like us to do a lot of like sustainable um, purchasing. I think that was a great idea. I think we did a lot of good for the powwow. Um, and then I would also like to the other idea I wanted to do. Um, I just want to like team up with the sustainability department or whatever and see what they have and then see how I can further that into the community, not just the MSU Denver as well. So, so um, good question. So this um, MCC Council thing interests you. Could you do both? Um, 
I don't think I want to do both, but I do want to participate. And that's where I was going to ask, um, I was going to nominate a specific somebody. <laughs> and <laughs> if they take on that responsibility, then I would like to show what I can and can't do because there's also tools in there that I would do that I would like to apply and try to get good at before I graduate. All right, so. And with Thank that, Council time is up. Can you let Paul back in, please? Okay, thank you, Kenny. Is our polling system working? Yeah. Love it. Oh, we're using this one. I think we're all adults. You see who voted for who, it doesn't matter, right? We all know. Yeah. That's, that's, that's about this, right? Yeah. I agree. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. So we could use regular polls for the floors? Yes. All right, now I have to sign into this poll. Okay. So, friends, there's been a poll set into the chat. Please vote who you think should take on this chairmanship. We don't vote, right? No, you can vote. Thank you. Yeah. You vote for. Is yeah. that the files? It's, it's the yeah, the forms. Yeah. Oh shoot. So this is different. We're voting. Yep. Why? We're just testing systems, right? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Why? We're trying to figure out effectiveness. Also, I will add in our SharePoint there is a voting record. All this is being recorded into the voting record. So <laughs> anonymous polls. I can't just, sign in. Yeah. I can't. Okay, I'll just put that out. What am I doing? It's making me sign in now. I motion. We we vote on this. Which is this for go? Yeah. Is there a second to that motion? Because Reed can't sign in. Uh, oh, don't. Second. I mean, just for because the sake of, of timing. Second. Yes. Okay, second. So it happening. All favor say aye. 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 All favor say no. Wait for who? What? Vote out loud. Gonna vote out loud. Yeah, aye. <laughs> Try this again. All favor say aye. 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 I oppose. Oh, you oppose. All right. Okay. Any other opposition? Any abstentions? Do you want to say why you oppose? Um, yeah, I just think they're both very good candidates. So. <laughs> no, oh, it's true. It's hard. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, but I mean, if I'm outnumbered, then might as well. There so. you go. Well, the resolution oh. passes. Well, yeah, you are. We will go. We will go down this line. Okay. And um, the line that's presented here, um, and you vote by your voice who you'd like. So, first in the line, Alejandro. I vote for Paul. All right. Uh, Thomas is not here. Uh, will. Naomi. Denny. <coughs> Naomi. Uh, Kristen. Naomi. Matt. Naomi. Me, I vote for Paul. Naomi. Uh, me. <laughs> uh, John. Oh. Paul. Uh, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Paul. <laughs> and then, uh, Gabe is not here. Re. Paul. All right, Kenny. What are those tabulations? Todd. Are you sorry? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I motion there be a couple co-chairs. Mr. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good yeah. 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 So there's a motion yeah. they board to make it into co-chairs. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. fine. So both of them would share the Just that. Yeah. 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 Oh. I like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 There's a motion on the floor. There's a second to that motion. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, all there say aye. 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 Any opposition? <laughs> Any opposition? One abstention. All right. It is recorded. There's two co-chairs for the sustainability committee. Sustainability, right? Okay, moving on next. Uh, discussion and vote. <laughs> Those goals are so cool. That's after. If not, we might push that. If, if, if there's a motion to push that to next week, we can do that, but rather not. Um, okay, next. Possible, I mean, uh, discussion to vote on a meeting time. So there was a poll that was put out by Thomas in the chat, and I've not looked at it recently, but I think 1230 was the majority on that poll. Am I so, yes, yeah, so I'm looking at it now from 12 to 2. The six people who filled it out being Denny, Gabriel, Matthew, Michael, Ree, and Tom C. The six said 12 to 2 are best. And then after 2 on Fridays, the only person not available was Denny. And then, you know, after five, it just drops downhill. Um, so 12 to 2 is the sweet spot for those six only. That's half the count list on yes. Friday still. So we'd move this meeting up to 12, essentially. Yeah. Now, uh, rubrically, I think it should be 12.30 only be early, a little yeah. earlier because SACAB gets out at 12. I like 12.30 too. Oh, okay. then you can grab lunch. And the Board of Trustees okay. meetings are on from 8.30 to 12.30. only one this semester, so I, I, I just missed the meeting. I would feel a late. Well, this yes. meeting, not that meeting. Oh yes. yes. So I I had to leave to go do that. Yeah. But um yes. So I 
don't think it's discussion, but we'll open up to discussion. What do we think? I think it's good. Yeah. Um, I'm cool with that time. I'm also cool with the time we have present. Cool, it's a great time, all right? I also want to know um, something from the staff and faculty point of view. Um, Friday meetings, as you've seen, there's really no students here on campus. So for being a shared governance, for being equitable for all students, um, I would love to explore a non-Friday meeting. Um, but given you know everyone's availability, I understand. But just know that a lot of staff have, a lot of staff, not too many students, have voiced, I guess, their concern that it's not as accessible. accessible for students on a Friday because they're not here. Um, that's one. And then two, as you all saw, the student comment hour got pushed back to next fall. Um, so that's something, if you're here next year, you can explore having during that comment yeah. hour next year, but that's not an issue for now. I think that we should definitely all can reconsider what he's saying because like yes even though we found a time that works great for us this isn't about us this is about the students 1000% and I, I hate to have to do this to myself low key because my schedule is already really shitty from Monday through Thursday but I'm willing to work with that um, and I have another tutor on the side who I think would also be willing to work with me and I can adjust that to virtually um so if you guys are open to it, I know that my schedule it's itself goes from 6.45 a.m. to at minimum 2.30, so I wouldn't be available till 2.45 to 3. So if you guys don't have classes, I would be willing to do 3 to 5 or for two hours, right? Yeah, 3 to 5 or 5 to 7, whatever. I know that really would suck, but we'd be giving the students the opportunity to actually participate with us. And I think that's what actually matters as a student at the KISI Council. And we have to put sometimes a sacrifice out there because it's best. And you got to think that also gives us more of our Friday to ourselves to like create resolutions, get time to ourselves. And we don't have to travel to campus. And we also don't have to, um, what's the other word here? Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to think here. Uh, we don't have to travel to campus and we'll be able to just like have that time. I guess I can't think of another word, but yeah. All right, so we yeah. all read. Well, um, I'm open to that. Um, it's going to be a little tough. I will also say the other SJs, they do me on their Fridays as well as SACAB. Those are three different entities on this campus that are very much us um, <clears throat> that do me in person on this, like that time. Mm -hmm. So I'm more in favor in keeping it at like the 1230 range. Also, I believe it's like in terms of work schedule and stuff like that, it's really tough to kind of yeah. pry it down. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so um, Paul, Ree, Will, I'm using the bathroom. I'll be really quick here. Um, I'm pro Friday for a few reasons. One, for the first logistical one, we that's the max uh, amount of available counselors on Friday, right? Um, and to kind of address this concern of uh, like, you know, are we really hearing student voice if, if, if we're not meeting on a day where they're all on campus? I think when they're on campus, they're going to class oftentimes, especially on a commuter campus. And when we think about how do we best serve the students, um, we need to like go amongst them, like as fellow students, right? We take classes, talk to them about their concerns, investigate what's going on amongst them, and then bring it into our committee work. Um, tell them about the opportunity to have their voice heard in, in, on a public record um, where it can be immediately acted upon, but otherwise they should be able to have your ear, you know? So I, I just don't see you know, if we had it on Thursdays versus we had it on Fridays, makes it be so radically different in terms of um, student uh, student participation in governance. If we're doing our job right and we're going around talk to students about what we're doing, mm -hmm. we should be able to have their voices represented at this table through what we like. You know, can, can kind of synthesize over the course of the, over the, over the semester, okay. right? Um, and uh, last thing I want, I think that's it. I want to be quick. Friday is good. But not change it. We should be able to serve the students and um, do our work outside these meetings. I, I am. I would love the 12:30 thing Friday. Happy to do that. If we need to change it, you know, if it needs to be changed, I will just have to join in line, and I hope y'all will give me that grace to do it. I just can't come on the other days, and I have, you know, loads of other things to do. I can come down here to meetings once in a while, but I can't do it every week. That's the only thing. So Will, Matt, Matt Naomi. Um, definitely flexible for to five for sure. And if not, if we decide to go from five to seven, then I'll, I'll be online. But that's exactly that. 
I personally wouldn't be in favor for five to seven, but I'm flexible any time before that. Seven, Friday? That's a dinner time. No, no, on Friday or on or during, during the week? During the week. Oh. Right? Oh, I understand. No way. I understood Friday. No, I'm trying to make it where it's like just somewhere. I guess not during the week, but Monday through Thursday, because that's the majority of classes. Where was my was my main point? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. No, okay then. That is good. I just want to mention personally, I'm flexible except for Tuesdays, um, but I'll see. To kind of address Paul's point, as the public relations chair, I do really want to focus on getting the student voices through the week as well. Mm -hmm. I agree with that sentiment. Got a motion. Do you see your question? Oh, uh, yeah. Got it. And then it's me next, then I'm going to make a motion. During okay, time. I just want to close this out. Yeah, me too. So, um, in response to Paul as well, like I do agree with what you're saying because we do have that. Um, I guess responsibility as well because yes we are all students here we have to definitely put ourselves first but he said himself like we do have a uh, responsibility to engage during the week which i think is um you know it's very difficult but like <coughs> just owning up to like your point we need to create that accessibility to ourselves um and if we need to join virtually i think that's um fine as long as we have some people already on campus which i'll be here so no matter what like it'll be fine um monday to thursday i have to be here so um, at least we'll have somebody in person and I can at least create that sense of engagement here. Um, and if you guys need to join online, totally fine. But I want people to feel comfortable coming here in person because it's really important that we teach people, our students, that it's OK that they're in a safe space, that they can bring our problems to us. And yes, we're going to have the drop box. And yes, we're going to come up with this thing online for them to also put their comments and concerns in. But having the ability to actually show up to these meetings and get the feeling for it or even online is a really great opportunity for them. Um, and that's. I think that like the Monday through Thursday is also going to create that sense of engagement. And that's also why they hold the majority of events on campus as well. So if they're holding an event, they're already going to be here as well. So they might as well just stop by, see how this is going. You know what I mean? And if we need to adjust like our public comment times, I think that would be perfect too. So if they want to like come in first and then we can discuss our stuff or if they watch the meeting before, like we can adjust as we need to is what I'm suggesting. But I do think it would be much more responsible as advocates to have the meetings during the week so that way our students have more accessibility to our meetings during the week because Friday I just don't see people coming in at all and we barely when we did have like the fiasco the, the fiascos that we did last semester a majority of our students did come in like via virtual but that was really hard and my like they moved their schedules for us and that shouldn't be happening we should be able to move our schedule for them that's our responsibility that's what they compensate us for okay um I will I'm going to try to make this motion interestingly. Can I DR that? Do a direct response? Let me say something first. Um, actually, go ahead. And then I'm going next. Appreciate it. Um, I talk to 100, 100 times more students outside of these meetings than I do during them. And that's including all of you all. And even when we've had maximum amount of public comment, it's just, it's tenfold. You know, it's it, you can't compare the numbers. And I don't necessarily think that the obstacle to seeing greater numbers of students in this space interacting with us is the meeting day. You know, I think there's a lot of other factors. Like one, do people know about student government? What the heck is student government? Why should I care? What are they doing for me? Right? I think that might be a bigger in, impact on the amount of students that come to these meetings and why, you know, I don't think it should be our that that shouldn't be our biggest concern when we talk about when we should have the meeting. We have had we, we have these questions of will all the counselors be able to make it? That to me seems like a bigger concern. And you know, if they're talking to a hundred times more people during the week, hey, this kind of sounds like we can do both of these things if we meet on Fridays still. Okay, direct comment to that though is that if we you're you're right that that's a big problem is that they don't know who student government is, but the students that I've talked to, it doesn't matter if they know who we are or not. They don't have the time to come here on Fridays because they have work, because they have other responsibilities, because we don't have classes here on Friday. So the majority of students like they have jobs, like just like we all have jobs and stuff like that as well. We work on campus, but if you work on campus, you're much more flexible Monday through Thursday to be able to get here and actually participate with us. And the people you reach out to, 1000% we support. We've seen it. It's posted everywhere and we love the advocacy work that you're doing, but that's one group of people or two or three groups of people that you've been able to access out of 18,000. Plus, I'm sure that our rate or our um, numbers have gotten higher, so we need to be able to access multiple groups of people and I'm trying my best with them. But listen, these students heads down in their book like it is hard to get them to participate because they are already struggling enough to find money to pay for their research and who knows what else. But my main point here is that it's not about 
necessarily the time or the day, but it's just finding something that is convenient for the students. And from my understanding, Fridays are not convenient for the students. All right. I've been sitting in the stack. I'm next. So okay, well, add me to the stack. Well, I motion to end discussion on this and to well, shut well, off the discussion we're having. Yes. Yeah, so here, here's here's the motion I'm about to make. So I am going to motion to end discussion and open nominations for a meeting time that we will then vote. I, I second that. I actually Thanks. question the legitimacy of that motion. It seems to me like you're using it to close discussion when there's active discussion on a thing. And yeah, it's to a, me that's it's, a, it's, that's it's, abuse of them. That's abuse of that particular motion. Just because you want us to stop talking about it, and you have you want it to close. We've done that. We can, in, we can still raise it. I, I I think that that's well. My motion is to end discussion and do what I just said. Nominate times for an, at a time. That's the motions right. on the on table. Cut off any sort of stack or anything like that. Too off of your motion. No, I, just, I think we ought to consider by the, the word by the rules, operations you here. Put it in motion. It, correct. It needs to be voted on. Yeah, so and he was in stack at the meeting. Yeah, I, I let you go into in front of me in the stack multiple times. Well, so. I'm going to make a motion a few My comments ago, stands. and it wasn't. It didn't have I that second motion. Second seconded. So That's what we're going to so the motion on the table is to um, end discussion and nominate times for a meeting. All right, it's been seconded by Naomi. Uh, Naomi. So what we're going to do is vote. So all in favor, say aye. 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 So, one. Can you, you keep track of the vote? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. well, yeah, Poor Kenny. Yeah, I have my hand up. Both of you have hand up. All right. What about online? Yeah, I'm asked. Christian, what's your vote? Aye. All right. Um, all opposed, say nay. 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 So, raise your hands. Nice and high. That's three. Two. All right. Any abstentions? One. Danny. Matt's there. Oh, so and um, Denny. All right. Okay, what's the total? Uh, the, uh, the ayes have it. It's six. All right. The ayes have it. Discussion has been ended. Now we'll open nominations for a time. So. I nominate. Can we wait? I have a. Can I make a motion to. Or can I make a friendly amendment to that motion? Can we. It's already been voted on. No, no, no. Like to, to not the, the times portion of it, just like can we nominate first during the week versus a Friday? Then we'll get to the actual time section to make it like easier. Say that all the time. Can we like like um, either choose like we'll vote on Monday through Thursday and then or Friday? So you'll either say Monday through Thursday or Friday and then we'll come up with the time that way. I feel like it's easier. The two votes. Yeah. Well, I, I think I have discretion. To kind of, I did the motion that I made. So um, sure, we'll do that. Okay. Cool. So um, then we will do. We'll just go down the list. Um, vote for weekend or or sorry Friday or weekday. Yes. So that's what we'll do. All right. So we'll go down the list. Um, with your vote, you either vote um, weekday or Friday. So, uh, and we'll start with Ree. I am for Friday. All right. Uh, Gabe's not here. Paul. Friday. Uh, John. Friday. Uh, Naomi. Uh, weekday. All right. Uh, Mike, I vote for Friday. Uh, Matt. Weekday. All right. Kristen. Friday. All right. Denny. I abstain. Abstention. All right. Will? Doesn't matter to me. Abstain. Abstention again. Uh, Thomas in there. Uh, abstain as well. All right. Three abstentions. Kenny? Mm -hmm. Friday. Friday wins. All right. So our meetings will be held Friday. Now we'll open nominations for the time, and I will nominate for 1230. Agreed. Is there a second? Is there a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start it? Yes. Okay. So there's one nomination. Is there another time on the table? Uh, 230. 2.30. Is there a second to Paul's motion? I'll second it. Well, he's just adding options. So see if, do you yeah. Nomination needs a second. So he needs a second. I'll, I'll second that. Just to give second. an option. And then I'll put forth a third time at one. Okay, cool. So there's 12.30. There's 12.30? Yes. There's 2.30. And then there's 1.30. All right. Any other? Is there no, second? I did not say 1.30. One o'clock. So one o'clock. One, 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 okay. And there's one. Can you add up all the I didn't get a second. Yeah, yeah. you could have voted. I mean, can I make a comment oh. on this nomination, or is it just like voting straight? We're gonna nominate. Um, so, is there a second? Second has one. Yeah, I'll second. Yeah, all right, is there second. second? All right, Denny's. So, if, if this is two hours, again, I work at three, and I get to me, it takes me thirty minutes. I mean, twenty minutes to get over there in the scooter. Uh, putting that out there, I'll okay. early figure it out, but. That would be my reasoning for 1230. Okay. I, would like I like that. That's a good idea. I would like to look here. I feel like, I mean, if, as a council, like if we absolutely want one o'clock, I think that we can definitely excuse that because 
yeah. you, you communicated that with us. So I feel like that would be perfectly fine. But if you had anything that you wanted to like, um, so like wanted us to, yeah, like to, like here at the beginning of it, I would just ask, uh, I would just probably suggest that maybe telling Kenny, like, so we can address it at the beginning so you don't miss out on discussing whatever your resolutions may be. And for those 30 minutes, I was not going to nominate myself for chair, or like the co chair, uh, if that changes anybody's hearts or minds. You were words. Huh? I was. Okay. But if that changes anybody's hearts or minds, if not, I'd I'd like to withdraw the my suggestion for 230. Okay, you made the nomination, so you go to it. So the two options left are 12:30 and one. So what we're going to do is now there's only two options. It's yes, it's either or. So we're going to go down the line again, and um, actually, Kenny's going to put it in the chat. Kenny's going to put it in the chat. You can select multiple in the chat. Kenny, is that in the chat? <clears throat> and if it comes down to a tie, we will go with our least. Huh? So if it comes down to a tie, we will go with the earlier time. <laughs> I'm fine with that. That's, I'm okay with this. And the duration is two hours, we said, right? Yeah, so yes. meeting is two hours. So I'll be going by. So, so Kenny's hard. doing another thing. <laughs> what we just doing, bro? Do you have to do another thing? Can we just do voice vote? Oh, um, is it out? Yes, thank you. We love you, Kenny. <laughs> yes, there we go. Sweat. Highest paid student podium. Yes. Okay. So pick a time, friends. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Moved. Okay. Okay. You can vote for more than one. Yes, we need two more votes. I, I thought that was the right word. It was moving around it every is, time I tried to. And, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it, it, okay. <laughs> so we're still waiting on one vote, but it is pretty, pretty not split at all. Um, Thank two, you. 12 30 to 2 30 wins. So with that, I declare our next week's meeting will be Friday at 12 30 to 2 30. Are we Good. in JSSB? Um, we in? Yeah, comment on that. Let's hold off. I will let y'all know by Tuesday because okay. now I had to reorganize all my reservations that I did. Point oh, oh sorry, I'm under. <laughs> Point of clarification. <laughs> we decided on JSSB. Or Are we decided? Is this place an option? So if this, I, no, I believe CCD meets here at 12. Yeah, they do. They and do. they already have the reservation. Um, we the JSSB was because we wanted to be in a more MSU Denver space, mm -hmm. and the technology is better. Yeah, yeah. True that. Okay. There we go. That's next. Sure. Done. Okay. Um, Re, you're up next with possible events, discussion, oh. brainstorm. So just quickly, because we've run on a lot today, yes. there's been a lot to go over, but uh, we, I can actually bring this up next week. But keep in mind, if you will, I met with Taylor Tackett um, in June because I had a, a fellow student come to me and talk about the fact that we don't have any really active shooter drills of late or, you know, there's been so many things going on around the country that are kind of scary. And because we're in this central city location, having some kind of event where we can have police involved, maybe fire involved, you know, whatever, whomever is going to lead either one or a series of small events that instructs people, particularly people who don't have English as a first language, on what to do and you know, I think it's really important for us. And Taylor has some budget, he said, for that. And, you know, maybe we can, we can do a TSAC initiative. And we just barely touched on it. And I said, I really wanted to bring it to all of you this in our first meeting so we could kind of hash out some ideas. And we don't have to do that now. We can do that next week. And so if you don't mind my Do you want to uh, put this on the agenda first thing next week? Sure. If that's all right with y'all. Yeah. 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 That sound good? Perfect. Okay. We'll move to the next first thing next week. Matt, did you want to say something now? I'll say it for next week. Okay. All right. All right. Then we move on to section six, the final thing in our agenda. We have three different uh, representative appointees here that need to be appointed by us to them. Uh, and then once they're, the representative is appointed, I will get them in contact with the correct person of each thing. So this is just easy. You can nominate someone. It doesn't have to be a election. Unless there's two people, then we'll just do a quick vote. Uh, vocally. Faculty, staff, senate. So you will attend all the faculty, staff, senate meetings and report back to us and get, just really get to know the people. Paul and Denny. Quick question. Uh, how often do they meet? I believe they meet once a month. How oh, once a month? They're, That's not true, Reed. Do they meet more? more? Yeah, we met once a month, but everybody got an email today. This is what I was just writing you all back about as well. From Liz, who was in charge of this last year and reported to her, <coughs> where they need a, either one student to represent us on two of their committees, um, which is policy and um, student affairs. And they met, I was just saying in the email, 
you know, once a month online. It's no big stretch, but it's great. They really want to know, you know, what TSEC is doing. And I think Mike has a really great point, though, that it's great if we can attend the faculty senate meeting, the person, you know, yes. once a month to be there to talk about what we're doing and what we want from them. Yes. So. Or if you want to look at those committees, if you look at your emails. But. Yes, good point. Thank right. you. Awesome. So, uh, is your question answered, Paul? Oh, yeah. All right. Jenny, you're up. Oh, I'm fine. I'm myself for that. All right. And I, I second. Huh? What's up? I second that nomination. What do you say? I'd like to nominate myself for that, too. All right, John, as well. There's a second for John. For what? The Again. faculty senate. Okay. The first one. Yeah. Yes. So, there's two nominations on the floor, one for Denny and one for John. Is there any nominations? Paul, go ahead. I want to nominate Denny as well. Denny's been nominated. Yeah. I remember well, second all, other, all our other positions, we've had secondary and third, fourth. No. Oh, okay. So yes. Okay. Is, okay. Par the norm. Yes, go ahead, Matt. I want to make sure I'm using the right terminology. I guess I want to present a motion. What do you mean? Or a, you I don't know, a suggestion to, since it does sound like there's so many potential meetings, mm -hmm. do we make it a co chair position? So it's your, oh, yeah. this is or a co uh, co representative, or like a rotating position kind of thing. So like if one one person's one too busy, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like that. Okay, so are you motioning something or you just bring that up? Motion it. I guess motion. that was a motion. I'm trying to still learn the lingo. All right. Yeah. Okay. I motion second that. that. There's that. There's a second to that motion. No way. Well, I just wanted to say something. I don't think that would be a good idea because let's say if there's a a, a point that was brought up in one meeting that you um heard but you couldn't you didn't necessarily um give the other person the full details or maybe you misunderstood something and then right. leave them in a different path so i feel like we should keep it to one person and keep all those like um, ideas and like, collective thoughts in one place rather than have it scattered around okay. i can see that so a responsibility i think that if you guys decided to do that then would be that i'm pretty sure those meetings are recorded mm -hmm. would be for you to watch those meetings before you go there so you can have your own opinions on them and then of course take the cliff notes from whoever went to the last meeting but that would be between y'all because otherwise like you're right 1000 percent yeah. Okay. So we're discussing the motion that you made. You yeah. can withdraw it any time if you wish. Paul, you're next. Uh, I, I, I uh, well, I think the motion is well intended, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, it mirrors like the structure we have here in the committee. I agree with what Alejandro has said, and that you know the general character, like or the understanding of what this representative brings, will be split into two. Even if they did their best to say, yeah, I, I, I appreciate your optimism about that, you know, me. Um, I just, you know, I, I do think that. They're also asking for one person. So maybe if we were to give them two people, they'd be like, well, what the heck? Yeah, that's not what we wanted, nor will that be conducive to us having a successful faculty. Committee. I agree with everyone saying just putting me in the stack. Just a quick comment, I think. Will, Matt, and Amy. Having a second person would, like, we'd have a main person, and then if they're out of town or whatever, that second person would come in and, you know, if, for example, a counselor out of a had to go, I don't know, for vacation or whatever it was, and they would have a second person already, but that second person would be in, inactive throughout the whole tenure. So, man, that's all good. So, I guess I, I don't necessarily want to fully withdraw mine, but I guess the second motion would be to vote on um, co chairs versus just or co representatives versus one representative. That's the motion. That's what the motion is heading to. So okay. Once yeah. discussions, then okay. So you made the vote on that discussion and agreeing to a vote. That's okay. Or We're all learning Robert's rules, so you are continuing. To, okay. Okay. So it sounds like he's are you motioning to end discussion? Yeah. Is a second to that. Um, so, yeah. 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 Second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All aye. opposed. Kristen, say aye. Any <laughs> abstentions? All right, it is done. Now will you vote? We will now vote on co-chairs versus or co-representatives versus a single representative for this committee. Um, I will go down the list and you just pick which one. Kenny, are you ready? All right, I have the single. Single. All right, so it's based one or two. Say one or two. One. So one. Will. Uh, co-chairs. Denny. One. Kristen. One. Matt. Two. Uh, me. I vote one. Naomi? Uh, two. John? Two. All right. And then Reed? Two. All right. Kenny, where are the votes? So you're forgetting. Oh, Paul, I'm so sorry. Thanks. All right. I lost everybody. You guys have the same last name, that's why. Paul said one. Oh, one. shit, you okay. guys do, huh? I didn't think yeah. about that. <laughs> Kenny? Professor Tom. We tied again. I said uh, one. Uh, 
All right, so two people are, will be appointed to this position as for the will of council. So um, I motion that we appoint John Denny as the correct representatives. Second. If there's a second to that motion. We'll go into voting. All in favor say aye. 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 Representative Tedder? Yes. Okay. So Kristen said aye. Uh, Paul, what is your vote? Oh, I'm sorry. So okay. those are the ayes. I'm going to vote no. Uh -huh. All uh, opposed say no. 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 Right. Yeah. Okay. So there's two. And any abstentions? The ayes have it. You two have been uh, Wait, appointed. Do we need to do Kristen then? Kristen said I. Oh. Uh, you two have been appointed to the faculty and staff senate committee. Thank you guys. Congrats. So there, you know, there are two committees mm -hmm. so, yes. to be on. So you can each be on one committee. Yes. I kind of solved this thing. Yeah. That's yeah. Way we had the email today and you can read about there those. Are no representatives. Yes, I will get you guys in contact with uh, President Goodnick of the staff senate uh, after this meeting. All right, next B, Council of Chairs in Deans, essentially. So this is the big committee they meet once as well. It's all the deans, all the chairs of the different departments. Um, they need representatives to sit in at this meeting. Dr. Retro is the chair, the president of this, I believe. Yes. So um, I will open nominations for this one. Paul? I'll nominate myself. Paul, all right. I'll nominate Will. Okay, all right. So is, is there a second to Paul's nomination? Second. 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 All right. Will? Um, is there a second to Will's nomination? Second. Second to Will's. All right. Wait, I no. uh, respectfully, respectfully <laughs> decline. <laughs> Thank okay, you. cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Perfect. I'd ask you to nominate yourself, so I thought I said you were yes to that. So, all right, any other nominations out on the floor? Going once, going twice. All right, awesome. Um, this, as there's only one nominee, um, it's a yes or no vote. Um, so, um, all in favor in appointing Paul to the Dean of Council Chairs Committee, say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions. All right, congratulations, Paul. You are the representative of the Dean of Council and the Chairs. And Will didn't run? He, he declined. I declined. Oh, awesome. All right, the last one is the tri institutional Leaders Committee. This is the thing I started earlier this semester with all three institutions. Um, they need a representative to go to that, um, to kind of just be one of the representative for that. So, um, I saw Alejandro's hand first. I nominate Will. All right, and I second that. I uh, nominate myself for that position. All right, well, uh, Matt. I nominate myself for that position. Cool. There's a, Matt. Is there a second to Matt. I'll second. A second to Matt. All right, any other nominations out on the floor? All right, as there are no motions, uh, the vote is Matt or Will. And we'll go, in, we'll go online here. Um, Bree, what is your vote? They don't talk. I get it. It's not chair. Right? No. Oh, so, yeah, this is just, just a point. Our, uh, sister. Uh, yes. Oh. I will. I will. Oh, I will. will. She hasn't got that. So, all right. Will. Uh, Gabe is not here. Paul. Uh, will. All right. John. Will. Naomi. Uh, will. Uh, Mike. I vote. Um, will as well. Uh, Kristen. Will. Uh, Matt. Me. Uh, Denny. Will. All right. Uh, will. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> uh, all right, awesome. Uh, I believe the vote is eight to two in the favor of Will. Is that correct? Appreciate it. Will, you have the vote to do this you. committee. Thank you. That's great. All right, with that, friends, closing comments. You know your chairs for your things, join committees, and get in contact with everyone's a chairman. Everyone's a chairman. I motion to end the meeting. I motion to end the meeting. I know, right? Second, second, second. 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 All favor, aye. 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 All opposed? All right, it's in a lot. Exactly 2 30. See, I told you I'd get us there. This is a good meeting. Good job, Mike. I told you I'd get you off the 4 30.